Well, hello and welcome to Greer Chamber Live. I um, want to thank everyone for joining us today and um, uh, thank Casas uh, Ioannidis for joining us as well. Uh, Casas is with the Small Business Development Center, which is a partner of the SBA. And um, he's a, uh, uh, he works in the business department and he's also a friend of the chamber. He comes to a, quite a few of our events and um, it's nice to see you and thanks for uh, being part of the program. I was turning it over to you for a quick introduction. Well, thank you for having me. And like you said, I'm with the Small Business Development Center and we're a partner of the Small Business Administration. They provide some of our funding and the state of South Carolina does as well. And because of where we're located, we're part of Clemson University where we, we do outreach for the College of Business. And, and in a nutshell, our mission is to help entrepreneurs with starting up or going successful business and helping the, the local economy with economic development. And under the trying circumstances that we're under right now, now it's more about helping keeping the businesses open and, and surviving, keeping people on the payroll and getting through the, when we break through this pandemic that we're back up and running and bounce right back with the economy. Excellent. And that's, I think, the, the crux of it all. And uh, we've been doing these programs. We're just finishing our wrapping up our third full week of uh, reaching out to different areas, everything, everyone from this, the city administrator to the mayor um, to the state of South Carolina and, and uh, nonprofits, for profits, and, and beyond. We've been hearing quite a few of the messages. So, but I guess my first question is after, you know, the three or four weeks that we've kind of been into this um, uh, unknown or uncharted waters, what are some of the local funding opportunities for small businesses that you've been working on um, the last few weeks? The primary thing is everyone's interested in the EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and the Paycheck Protection Program Loan, the PPP. And so for the most part, most people are either interested in applying for it because they, they see the grant component to it as well as the PPP, they see the opportunity for free money. And so that's where there's a, a good benefit, plus there's opportunity for a low, low interest loan, especially with the PPP only being 1%. The downside with that is it, it's a two year payback. So the payments could be high. Whereas with the EIDL, it's a little bit higher in rate, potentially at 3.75%, capping out around 4%, but you have a lot more favorable um, terms where the payback could be up to 30 years. So then you're getting what under what might be a $600 monthly payment with the PPP, you might have a $60 payment with the EIDL. And those are two uh, pretty strong uh, loan programs. I know the state has just um, um, mentioned, I think it was today I was on a call that they mentioned that the funding might be out in, in um, uh, some of those some of those loan programs. And um, do you know anything about that? And do you also know, um, do you want to talk a little bit about if you have been following the, 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 the federal um, new wave of loans that they're, or appropriations that they're um, uh, asking for in terms of dollars back to the states, uh, if you want to talk a little bit about that and what the small businesses are doing that aren't getting their loans fulfilled. So my understanding is, Late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, the funds officially ran out. And so all those, the $350 billion appropriations are all used up. And because of that, the SBA has, currently has no authority to accept any PPP loans or lender applications for that matter. And then the lenders are also unable to load any applications or adjust the loan amounts in their capital access financial system or the e-train system that they use to to process the loans and so from what i'm understanding it, it looks like the lenders they have the option of continuing to take loans there, during this time period or not because with with there no, not being funds available sba can't take anything for money that they don't have to, to provide for it. So that's the reason why SBA can't do anything. The lenders, some of the lenders are taking the approach that they will continue to process loans, loan applications and have them ready for hopefully whenever more appro appropriations are made available. So that way, as soon as they're made available, 
they're ready to go with it and get it submitted. And then others, they're still so overwhelmed, they may oh, can be continuing to work on the existing application that they have, so they're not taking any more in the interim. And I was I was in part of a, a committee meeting this morning with Congressman Timmons, and he was talking like there may be they're hoping that they can get get some things figured out and get the bill passed, and hopefully there'll be money available around the middle in the next week. Yeah. Again, a lot of things have to go right. Everybody has to get in agreement with everything and get the bill passed and and get it approved and everything signed off on, but. Hopefully, hopefully a week from now, everyone will be starting to see some money flowing again. It's amazing how many, I don't have the, the numbers in front of me, but it's amazing how many um, businesses actually went after some of those loans, uh, especially the need for those, um, the need for the small business to stay afloat. And some of the news stories that you hear, it's two or three weeks at a time, maybe five weeks, maybe eight weeks. Um, are there some stories that you've heard in particular of, of businesses that you could either name or not name that, um, you know, what is, what is their length of, of time that they can stay afloat with, with these, um, the idle loan or the, um, or the PPP? Well, with the idle loan, it's, it's turning out that I believe the original anticipation was the idle loan was going to be quicker money to tie you over until you got the PPP if you needed that in addition to it. But it seems like the people getting PPP loans are seeing the money quicker with that than they are with the idle. And then with the idle, they get they start giving an option to request an advance up to ten thousand dollars, and that that advance is based on the number of employees a business might have. And so, if it if they had say one employee, they might get a thousand dollars, not not ten thousand dollars. If they had seven, they might get seven thousand dollars advanced to them. And whatever is advanced, that would be treated as a grant that did not have to be paid back. And then, and then you had the opportunity to go for the, and then so that's the advanced part of the EIDL. But there's still the loan component. But that could be four to six weeks out before you see anything from that. And that's going directly through the Small Business Administration. But if you go to a lender to get a PPP loan, you could be doing an application and see the money in as little as five days. And or, or maybe even quicker than that, just depending on how, how well things go with the timing. And so it's the, 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 way the, the way it was set up was they thought the IDL money would come quicker because when you apply for the PPP loan, one of the questions on that application is, have you received any money from the EIDL loan? Well, if the PPP loan's getting processed faster than the EIDL, you can't even answer that question. <laughs> or basically you have to say no, yet you could potentially have money coming later. And the other facet is that if you used any money from the EIDL loan towards payroll and you get a PPP loan, you would have to consolidate that EIDL loan into the PPP loan, which you can't do if you get the PPP loan before you get the EIDL. Right. So there's some confusion and, and in this process and I think it was known this most likely will happen based on the nuance of it. Um, our companies all across the board, I heard the average average um, the average loan is about two hundred and thirteen thousand dollars is what I heard. Maybe I'm crazy in the state of South Carolina. So I heard that I saw that today. So small business and big business are both going after um, this the the pool and um, some are being shut out because of, again, the speed and the timing. Uh, some have misread, under, uh, trying to understand um, who's going after that. And I don't have the, the chart in front of me, but it looked like um, like construction uh, companies were one of the, the bigger portions of who's going after this funding. But I don't know if you have a um, knowledge of who, what industries are in need of those uh, of those loans and who's who have you talked to uh, mostly about getting those loans? What, what industry? Most of the industry that I'm dealing with that's looking for those loans are going to be are in the service or retail industry, a lot of food and beverage and stuff like that, and, and actually a, a full variety of service, whether it's consulting services or so forth. But it seems like a, a big problem that I'm seeing with a lot of the smaller businesses is that they do not <coughs> work with a, a lender 
they have a relationship with a bank that that is not doing the PPP loans. And so they have to reach out to another lender. And if they don't have an existing relationship, then they're getting the runaround because they're only processing their, their own customers just because of the demand. The sheer demand doesn't give them the time to process uh, non, non-existent customers. And so that's been a real big problem for a lot of smaller businesses. So that creates the opportunity for the bigger businesses that have the deeper relationships with the banks to get the get the PPP funds. And so they're seeing large dollar amounts and those and those funds are running out a lot quicker. And if I, I, I didn't see the South Carolina numbers, but I saw some numbers where where I, f- I forget how many applications there were. It was over a million applications and based on based on the using up the entire $350 billion, it, it seems like the average loan across the United States was two hundred over two hundred thirty nine thousand dollars per loan, and that's a lot. And then a lot of there's a lot of small businesses they don't need near that much to to help their business survive. And without without that assistance, they're not going to survive. Yep, absolutely. And I'm I'm just pulling up. Um, there was a, a conversation this morning. I'm just pulling up some of the industries. If I can find it, I'll, I'll relate to it. But in the meantime, you know, um, it is a virtual world now, and and some some small businesses probably aren't are com- are comfortable meeting face to face. Are you seeing an uptick on the virtual opportunities? Um, and those, you know, whether it's working with a customer, a new client that you work with, um, and are you seeing an uptick in those virtual um, experiences? People calling you on Zoom, much like today. Yeah, we we our office has switched to, and actually our, our whole state has switched to doing face-to-face meetings to doing it either through Microsoft Teams or, or Zoom or, or just a straight-up phone call. And I mean, the technology has definitely been been tested for us. I mean, it was trial by fire, and it's and it's actually working out very well because with Zoom and and Microsoft Teams, we're able to do screen shares and stuff. So. In the past, if if I wanted to have a meeting and go over financials and stuff, it'd be difficult to do over the phone. We didn't really take advantage of Zoom or Microsoft Teams. We just is either either over the phone or face to face. And so going over numbers, it's a lot easier to do face to face. But now that we're actually leveraging the technology, we can just pull up the the spreadsheet or whatever on the screen and and actually walk through and just drag the cursor over the numbers and and easily point out the the areas that we need to work on or update. Yeah, and that's and I think that's that's vital. And there's I know there's a few on this call right now. Um, uh, Bill Simmons in particular that uh, has used you know this virtual meeting space for for uh, years and for others to be playing in that field is a nuance. And as you get used to it. Um, uh, Bill joked just a little bit ago about getting used to uh, being in that virtual space. Well, as you get used to it, you're starting to use it as a tool, I guess, down the road. But uh, it's been it's been good. Um, I just pulled up the that information. You're right. The average overall loan size is two hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars, and then construction companies, uh, professional, scientific, and tech, technical services make up um, a good portion of that. Manufacturing, healthcare. And then accommodation and food services make up about 10% of um, the overall funding that was given out. I'll tell you a disappointing number that I've seen is that, I mean, South Carolina is the fifth worst impacted state when it comes to the virus. But if you look at the amount of funding from these loans that came into South Carolina, it's next to nothing. Yeah. That's, and that's tough. And I think that's where they ran out so quickly. And the banks have been working. I don't know if there's any of the bankers on right now, but I know the banks have been uh, working tirelessly to, to uh, make sure that those those loans have been um, processed. So uh, those are in attendance today. Please feel free if you have questions. Um, you can un, you can unmute yourself and feel free to to ask uh, Casas or just write them to me. Uh, there's a chat button at the very bottom of the screen, and feel free to uh, shoot me a, a question if um, if you have any. Do you see, and I, I'll do a quick question, do you see a trend where businesses were at first closing 
closing down and saying, okay, we're, we just have to hunker down and not be open for a couple of weeks and that are reopening? Um, or are you seeing where they just try to stay open for those few weeks and now you're starting to see them panic that they're, that they're not going to um, uh, stay open longer? I don't know if there's a trend out there of some sort. Most of the business that I've been working with, they were either forced to shut down because of the nature of the business or the ones that were able to stay open they were staying open based off of the amount of cash flow that they had. And, and I was working with them and we we're just making sure doing a constant monitoring of cash flows on a daily basis, that there's enough revenue in here that we can cover all our expenses and keep our payroll, keep our employees paid and we keep them on. And those, those were, it was being looked at on a daily basis and being, uh, decisions being made on basically a weekly or semi-weekly basis. So as long as there's enough cash flow, then we're, we're, they were trying to keep their employees on so they didn't have to. And a couple of them, they held out as long as they could, and they finally got to the point where they couldn't, and they had to, they had to furlough them or lay them off. And then and I've had some where they were fortunate to see a slight uptick in, in revenue to where they're able to keep it just enough to cover payroll and and then they finally were able to get some some funding through the ppp loan and yeah it at, at this point when the pandemic set in and, it, and you just really started to feel the impact it shifted from focusing on profits to focusing on, on cash flow not worrying about if we're making money it's just do we have enough money to cover the expenses so we don't have to let people go or, or close the doors yeah, and I think that's a that is the sentiment that you're or the, the sentiment that you're seeing hearing today with um, uh, business is that uh, immediate response and immediate not survival but immediate um, are we okay for the next month are we okay for till June July whenever uh, we're looking at reopening that those doors again so uh, we, no we appreciate hearing uh, uh, you say that and again. Uh, those that are out there, if you um, have any questions, please feel free to um, either mute yourself or unmute yourself and feel free to ask the question. David, this is Ben Fields. Hey, Ben, how are uh, you doing? Good, good. Good to see you. Good, good to see nice all to of see you. you. Hey, uh, quick question, Costas, um, on the Triple P loan, if, if you've already applied but um, haven't been funded, do you anticipate seeing a, any uh, reapplication or do you think the, the current application as it is will, will stand for the new funds if they, if they come through? My understanding is you will not have to reapply and, and basically it's going to hold in, the, it's going to be in a holding pattern as to where it is. So you won't have to get back in line. Everybody rushed to get in line a second time. You're, you're kind of holding your place in line as it is. Okay. So if, if you, do some more number crunching and you realize, you know what, I need to update my numbers. You're not going to be able to do that. That, that then you're going to have to go to the bank and you're going to have to, as soon as they open back up, they can resubmit, but then now you're moving back to the, to the back of the line where you can hop back in. Gotcha. Makes sense. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I might have a couple things, David, if you don't mind. Um, uh, first of all, Casas, thanks for being here. You know, I, I I jumped on a website just to stalk you a little bit again before the meeting, just to kind of remind myself of some things. And man, I just I love your the statement about you know helping entrepreneurs grow successful businesses. I think the passion of most of us are on this call today, even if it's a short, a small amount of people. Um, it's an important part of why we come together. So um, kindred spirits, I love it. Um, so I, I actually had two different kinds of questions, and so I'll, I'll make room for somebody else in between them. But you know, my first one is, yes, um, you know, we're really focusing right now on how to support that business that may be struggling and taking advantage of opportunities with um, uh, some of the um, uh, things that have been set aside. But I've also been really proud of some, seeing some of the businesses that I've been associated with just be very creative and innovative during this time period to talk, you know, some of the things you even talked about, you know, finding new revenue streams in order to meet that cash flow need. And just from your seat and being around a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners to help them find success, do you have a front row seat to seeing any of that? You know, for example, I have a 
local restaurant that's, you know, they're working probably harder than they ever have and they've made some real changes, but in some ways they're actually being more profitable right now because of their, you know, their labor costs are down and, they're, and they don't need as many people for the curbside delivery, which again has its pros and cons, but as a business, they found a way to really shine. Um, you know, what are you seeing out there where businesses are using creativity and innovation to really shine? See, this is that, it's, it's good that you brought that up because this is the time where you have to be creative. You have to change your marketing message. You have to refine your operations. You have to find ways to cut your expenses so that way you can get through this, this time period where you're expecting the worst. And so you got to make the most of it with as little resources as possible. And so if you can make the most use out of this time to refine your messages, your operations and all these things, you could actually streamline your business. You could come up with a whole new revenue stream that you never even thought was possible. Mm -hmm. and, now, and then when you go back to regular operations, now you've got a secondary revenue stream that's making the business even more profitable than, than you, you originally thought it could be. So, I mean, even though you might have to be laying people off or you don't have enough work or whatever, if, and say you're able to leverage the PPP program to where you can, you can pay employees, but maybe you don't have the amount of work that you normally would. Maybe you can leverage their mind and get, get them to work on things, creative ideas and get their input on ways to refine processes and things like that, mm -hmm. where even though you're not getting the typical work out of them, you're getting some work and you're getting, you're getting intellectual assets out of them to improve your business at a time when you wouldn't have that time available to you to stop back, stop, take a step back and reflect on the business and, and come up with new insights for the business. So, so it could be a good opportunity to, to take a, take this to improve the business. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's, you know, I think that's huge. You know, one way we're saying that is just stay in the game, <laughs> right, and and be proactive as much as possible. So that's that's a good point you made. Definitely. I might have a different theme or topic, so I want to give a chance for somebody else to maybe ask a question before I take a second turn. Okay. Now, Bill, I think you're good to go. Yeah. All right. I, one of the least give opportunity. So again. Um, you know, I'm so grateful for the idol, the PBL, the things like that, that people are able to take advantage to help get them over some of uh, the roadblocks and obstacles that their business may be experiencing. My mind also shoots to, yes, we, we need to overcome these immediate challenges and issues, but we also have opportunities that are either available to us right now or will come uh, right on the other side of this. And so again, because of the kind of work you do, you know, we're seeing, you know, these loans become available. I've also seen a little bit where there have been a loosen of some restrictions and some new products for new startups and businesses, whether it's franchise purchasing or uh, just a, you know, general startup. Uh, do, you, are, do you have any insight on how any of that's working, like the new SBA Express loan, you know, the limit, you know, change, make some changes on that. Is there any insights that you could bring about, you know, people wanting to take advantage of opportunity despite all this chaos. So there, I've had people come to me wanting to start up businesses right now. And so I think a big factor in this is what industry is it, the, the location, the timing and everything. And so it might not be the right time. And if it's not the right time, you can still take this time to be doing your research, putting all your numbers together, putting your business plan together, making sure everything's right, you're ready to go so that when the timing is right, you're ready to jump and apply. And there's there's a lot of lenders out there that are willing to, to invest in new, uh, or give out money, do loans for, for new businesses, but at the same time, they're also very particular because of there's a lot of uncertainty and so they're there's going to be certain industries that they're not really wanting to lend right now or other others are willing to do it if there's enough capital involved but still there's there's a lot a lot of factors that go into play right now when it comes to if you're going to even be able to get a loan and 
And if so, who, who are the lenders? Because some lenders are going to be willing to take, take risk in certain industries and some aren't mm -hmm. during this time period. Mm -hmm. And the thing with the franchises, at least with the franchise, you have a model in place. You got a structure so that everything is, it's not trying to figure out how the operation's going to be. You've got that guidance there to help get you through a time like this. So it's, it's going to be a little bit of a safer loan in, in some respects. Sure. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any more uh, questions out there? Now, Ben, you had asked about the PPP loan. So I guess one question I have for you is, <clears throat> are you are you comfortable with all the, the, the stipulations of it? Because a lot of people, when they see the PPP or the EIDL, the, the first thing that grabs them is, this is free money. But this is a loan. And so you have to treat it like it's a loan. And it's not forgiven until you've done certain things so that you meet the certain criteria for them to forgive it. So, I mean, are you comfortable with everything? Or are there certain things that you, you're not familiar with? or the things that you could use a little bit more enlightenment on? Uh, no, I think, I think we're pretty comfortable with the, the terms of it, um, unless there was some fine print that, that we missed. Um, but uh, our, our plan was to, as I think a lot of people, um, was to apply. And um, if we were able to, to, to get the funds, uh, then, um, you know, just with the uncertainty of not, not knowing exactly what are, what are our customers going to do and um, how bad is this going to get uh, to, to at least apply and see if we can get those funds as a kind of a just in case. And then if we don't need it, then we, we have the money to you know, pay it back um, okay. without any problem. Um, so um, that's, that, that was our, that was our stance. Have you been able to retain employees? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thankful for that. We've, We've seen a little a uh, little bit of a dip, but nothing like um, a lot of a lot of businesses out there. Uh, you know, we're not we're not down 50, 80, 90 percent as uh, as some uh, some um, some companies I know of. So we're thankful for that. Very thankful. Have you had to reach out to any any of your whether it's lenders or your your landlord or anything like that to see about getting any deferments or, or forbearances on, on payments. Yeah. I talked to our landlord and he, he wouldn't budge. Uh, I'm our landlord. So <laughs> <laughs> he's already, uh, he's already cutting us a pretty good deal. So he wasn't too interested in moving on that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, uh, I haven't talked to, um, haven't talked to our, our banks about, deferring any of our, you know, line of credit payments or anything like that. We have not had those conversations. Did you, did you have any problem with the banks wanting to, uh, to cut back on the amount you had available to you with your line of credit? No, 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 uh, no, no pushback on that. That's good. Cause, yeah. Cause there have been some lenders out there who, who, um, dialed down their line of credits, reduced the limits and even did away with, uh, a lot of them. Yeah, we we we'd heard a little bit about that, and we're you know discussing do we need to go ahead and, and pull the money and just have it uh, if if we if we need it, so that if uh, the bank wants to make that decision, then um, it's, uh, the money's already pulled. But um, we didn't we didn't go down that road, and thankfully the our banks haven't they haven't uh, reduced our our line. Okay. Yeah. Any um, any more questions that uh, Casas can help out with today? I think that um, the, the conversation, this is a conversation that will probably continue on. Um, and I just sent a, uh, a notice, or I just got a notice about a, a talk that U.S. Chamber of Commerce is doing next, um, not U.S. Chamber, but the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce is doing on Monday. It's going to be with Senator uh, Lindsey Graham. He'll be on the phone and um, I just sent a, a note out, Ben, I sent you a note, uh, participate in that if you're interested. If, we'll put it on our website if you're interested in, you just have to register. But a lot of these questions and coming from a senator from the federal government, you'll probably hear about 
when that phase, they're calling it phase four, but when those phase four, those appropriations are gonna be um, put out there. The call I was on today, I wish I, I just don't have a slide for it. Um, they were talking about that and some of the 20, 250 billion or something was put out, but then there was another number, it was like 2.3 trillion, another trillion dollars were, uh, is what they were looking at based on, um, based on the influx of, of loans that were already um, put out into, they wanna make sure there's cash in the uh, cash flow for the small businesses to stay afloat. So um, keep an eye out for that. And if any of that information comes up, I'll make sure I get out to our members um, what, the, what the most up-to-date um, information is. And Costas, if you're available for other questions <clears throat> after this interview, um, would it be okay for people to contact you? Definitely. You can reach me at Costa, K-O-S-T-A, at quimpson.edu, or you can go through our main website, scsbdc.com, and you can either register or you can, you can get my contact information or, or any, uh, any number of other consultants with the Small Business Development Center where, wherever you're at in South Carolina. Excellent. Well, thank you. And thank you all for uh, joining us today. And Casas, I'm going to ask you one, one last question. How does Clemson football look this year? And is there going to be a season? I don't know. I was wondering if it's going to turn into like a, an online football program, kind of like, kind of like the education. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. Well, good. Well, we appreciate you taking time, especially on a Friday afternoon. Um, like I said, if there's other questions, feel free to email me directly or, or to uh, the chamber team, and then we'll make sure it gets answered. And uh, everyone have a wonderful uh, weekend. And Costas, thank you again. Well, thank you. Everyone have a good day. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. Thank you.